we get to verse 10, right? Verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, verse 5. So we're going we're gonna to ask in a little bit, we're going to ask Mr. Isaac to read verse 9 for us. But first, I want to ask you all at once to tell me your first name. Everybody, all at once, on my signal, tell me your first name. Let me hear one, two, three. Okay, I don't know if I could tell what everybody's name was at one time there, but it's a good thing that we all have a name, right? Yeah. Because if we didn't have a name, I could say, could the student with the black shirt please come up here? Don't, don't do that. We have a student with a black shirt there and a black shirt there, right? Wait, or I could say, could, could the boy with the red hair come up here? And there would be two boys that could answer that question, right? Uh, three boys with that question. Two fake red hair and one real red hair. Right? We could say it would be really hard. What if um you could could the girl with brown hair come up here? There's a whole bunch. But it's much easier if I can say, can the person with this name, can Amos? come up here. Can Alistair come up here? Don't come up here. Right? But a name is important, isn't it? It's important. It's really helpful. And there's some people, their name is, is extra important. Now, not necessarily their name, but can you name some people who are extra important? Jesus. Well, there's him. Yes. God. God. But, but even other people, not, not that important. But, but, I mean, in our country, or in John. our, in where, in your life, who are some people that are important? John. Like John? Who's John? Um, I, I read the Bible. Right? Okay, I'm not talking about people in the Bible. I'm talking about people in, in your house, in your school, in the neighborhood, Mom. Mom. in the state, Please. in the country. Mom. Some names of people that are important. Who's, who, who, Deegan? My teacher. Your teacher. Teacher is an important name, isn't it? And the act, Miss who? Miss Awe. Miss Awe. Everybody stands in awe of that teacher. Okay. And how about you? Who? Um, my mom and dad. Mom and dad. They're important, right? Their name is high. And um, how about the sheriff? Or the policeman? Or how about the... President or the governor, all of those people, they have they have important names, don't they? And what does it mean? If their name is high, if what they do is high, that means that they can, you know, now I know there's sometimes it's not this way, but it's supposed to be that in your classroom, who has the highest name in the classroom? The teacher. The teacher, right? I'm the second highest. Oh, I bet. Because I'm the student of the month. You're the student of the month. Okay. Next next month though, you won't be the second highest name, right? Mm, yeah. Somebody else. So, but the teacher, and is there somebody who has in your school that has a higher name than the teacher? It's who? Um, pastor. A pastor. Well, if your school is part of a church, yes. It's a I have a church at my school. Oh, you do. Okay. Um, Alistair? In your school, in your school, is there somebody that has a higher name than your than the teacher's name? Yes. Who? Um, my uh, gym teacher. The gym teacher is higher than the than the classroom teacher. Yeah, my gym teacher has a really long name. A long name. Yes. Okay. But is there any? So in the in your classroom, the teacher, because they have the high name, they tell other people what to do, right? Yes. So who tells the teacher what to do? The um, principal. The principal, okay, yeah. So the police officer, if the police officer is in his car, is walking down the street and he sees you, and he says, young man, come over here. No. Yeah, you better listen to the police officer, right? Okay. We listen to the police officer, but who tells the police officer what to do? The police chief. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, and who tells the police chief what to do? Uh, the person that owns the building. Uh, not the person that owns the building. 
Yeah, but the police chief, he has laws that he has to obey. Maybe he answers to the mayor. Um, how about the governor? The governor of the state. He's pretty important, isn't he? He's like the number one man in the state. That's a high name. He can tell other people under him what to do, right? He can, he can sign orders that says, I want this to happen or that to happen. Not that long ago, he signed an order that said, nobody can go to school. Everybody has to, should wear a mask. Okay, that's, he, was, he was out of order, but he told people under him what to do. Does the governor have somebody above him, though? Maybe the president. We have a president in America, don't we? Yes. That's a pretty high name. But some, some is that the highest name there is, though? Is the president the highest name in the whole wide world? No. It's up there pretty high. Yes. Mr. Ike, can you read Philippians 2, verse 9? Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. And given him a name. Which and given him a name. Ooh, somebody has a name that is above every name, above the teacher's name, above the principal's name, above the pastor's name, above the governor's name, above the sheriff's name, above the police chief's name, above the president's name, even above mom and dad's name. There's one person in the world whose name is above every other name. What is that name? That was verse 9, right? Yes. And wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, Jesus every knee should bow. So the president's knee has to bow before Jesus. The sheriff's knee has to bow before Jesus. Mom and dad's knee needs to bow before Jesus. The principal's knee needs to bow before Jesus. All, every person, every knee, our knees, everybody, yes, every knee should bow and that every tongue, right, should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, I want to tell you just a little bit more about Jesus being Lord. His name is higher than every other name. Jesus. And so because his name is higher than every other name, that means everybody should do what he says. Now let me ask you this. Has, have you ever been told to do something that you didn't want to do? Yeah, we've all been told to do something that we didn't want to do. And sometimes we probably just didn't do it because we didn't feel like doing it. Well, and that's, do it. that's not right. I have to do it. Right. So we have to do things. Some people, their name is so high, their position is so great, we have to do what they say. And sometimes we just have to do it even if we don't like them because they have, the, they have that position, right? Yeah. But other times, people have said they will obey someone just because they love them. And that's why, even though Jesus is Lord, we ought to obey him because we love him. I want to tell you, a long, 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 long time ago, in the land of Israel, they had a custom. They had a practice where a person, a man, could, well, let's say this. He got into debt. Do you know what debt is? Yes. He owed people money. He owed people money, and he didn't have enough money to, give it to, 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 to pay. So he went, and he would sell himself into slavery for like five years, or for six years. Never more than seven years, because this is the way God said it should be. So he could sell himself, and that way he could sell himself, and he could get the money and pay that debt. But because he sold himself... To somebody, the man that bought him, the man that gave him the money, was his boss, right? Yeah. He was his lord. He he had paid money. He bought him. So the 
person who sold himself became the servant or even the slave of this other person. And that means, I mean, if you're a slave, whether you sold yourself or not, you do what the master says, right? You do what he says. If he says, go, go clean up the sheep pen, the stinky sheep pen, you go do it because you're a slave. You do what you whatever you're told. You do it because you have a master, right? And the whole world has a master, and that master is the Lord Jesus Christ. So everybody now, a lot of people, a lot of people in the world, they don't obey their master, do they? No. No, they don't. Some people obey their master just because they know they have to. But the Bible says that there were, there would be times, and there was times in the children of Israel's life where a man would sell himself and he would be a slave and then when it came time remember I said every seven years in the seventh year all the masters had to free all of their slaves that they had bought it was the way that their culture was but the Bible said God said that there could be somebody who when it was time for them to be free could say my master has been such a good master and I love him. He has taken care of me. Even though I was a slave, he's taken care of me so well. I want to continue forever to be his slave. And God said when that takes place, the master would take the slave to the doorpost. Up against, I don't know how they did that. Maybe this way, up against the door. And take a nail and poke a hole through his ear. Like a, like a pierced ear, but poke a hole in, this, in the ear, and that way, every man, every person who had a hole in the ear was identified as being a slave to somebody. So every person in their culture who had a hole in the ear showed that they were a slave to somebody. And they had chosen that. They had said, this master is such a good master, I want to serve him for the rest of my life. You know what that is a picture of? That's a picture of, of Jesus. Isn't, isn't Jesus perfect? Yes. Isn't he, isn't he wise? Doesn't he know everything? Yes. So if Jesus knows everything... He knows what is the best thing for me to do today and tomorrow and the next day. And is Jesus loving? Yes. Is, does anybody love more than Jesus does? No. Is Jesus good? Yes. Is anybody better than Jesus is? No. no. So since Jesus knows what's best for me and he loves me, he will probably tell me, to do the things that are best for me. Right? And not probably. He will. He will always tell me to do the things that are best for me. Now sometimes, because I'm a human being, and you are too, I think I know better. I would rather do what? No. I want to do. No. Lots of times we do. Lots of times we, we go and we do something, and in the back of our mind we know, the Bible says I probably shouldn't do this. And if the Bible says it, that means Jesus said it. And if Jesus said it, that means it was the right thing, the good thing, the best thing for us to do. But we still do what we want to do. And that's not, that's disobedience. That's not obeying. That's not asking like Jesus is our Lord. No. It's disrespect. So why should Jesus be Lord? First of all, he is eternal. Remember we've looked at our circle before when we talked about eternity? We can't find a starting point or an ending point in this circle. And circle reminds us of eternal eternity. Was well, there ever been a time when Jesus didn't exist? No. He has always been. And will there ever be a time? Jesus died, but he continued to exist, and he rose from the dead, and he's alive forevermore. So Jesus is eternal. We know by reading the Bible that Jesus created everything. Right here we just have the representation of what? The earth. The sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, 
And so every, the whole universe, is there anything greater, bigger than the universe? No. No, but Jesus created that. And then everything on the earth. Think about that. Think about the, the grass and the dirt. Jesus created dirt so that it would grow grass. And he put water on the earth because he, he designed trees and grass to need water. Everything we see around us in nature, Jesus created. And then he created all the animals. And he created the system of animals, how they work together. And he created men and ladies. And then he made it so that they could get married and produce children. And he made it so all of the things in, yes, he made it so all of the things in the earth work together according to his perfect plan. Jesus is Lord. And, let's say, this white inside the circle reminds us that Jesus is holy. He is righteous. He is perfect. There's no one that comes close to being perfect like Jesus is. Jesus never sinned. Everything Jesus does is perfect and right. And then, Jesus came to the earth. And that's what we've been learning about. We've learned about lots of different things that, that Jesus did while he was here on the earth. And most recently, we learned about, what does this show him doing? Walking on the water. None of us can walk on water. We can walk on wet concrete, but we don't walk on water. But Jesus, because he created the water, could tell the water to hold him up. He could tell the water to hold Peter up. And he did, right? And then what does this remind us of? Right, so that, those are supposed to be rolls, loaves of bread, and the two fish. Remember there was 5,000 men, plus, plus, their, plus some women and children, so probably at least 10,000 people. And Jesus fed them from seven pieces of food. What was he, he was making food. Just like he turned the water to wine way back in our story. He could take water and turn it into something. Why? Because he made it. And so everything that he makes does what he tells it to do. And then last week we learned about how he was up on the mountain praying, and all of a sudden the glory that he had when he was in heaven shone through his body and through his clothing. And Peter saw it and he said, Jesus, we should make some tents, one for you and one for Moses and Elijah, because they showed up there. And a big cloud came down. Where's my picture of the big cloud? A big cloud came down over top of Jesus and Moses, uh, Jesus and Moses and Elijah and, and Peter and James and John, and they knew that that was like the glory of God. And a voice came out of the cloud and said, "This is my beloved Son. Listen to him." He said, "Hear him." And so God said that the disciples should just listen to Jesus. And by listen, that means listen to what he says and do it, right? So, then, some things that we haven't talked about recently, but kind of talk about all the time. These things remind us that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the boss. He's higher than everything else, but Jesus came to earth, and at the end of his life on the earth, he was killed. How could somebody who's the boss be killed? How could somebody who's the master of everything be killed? Couldn't he just stop it from happening? Oh, he was. He's always been God. Yeah. He created. Nothing came, everything after creation. So if he was God, if he was boss, if he was the master, if he's the Lord, he could have stopped anything, right? But he didn't. It is weird. Why do you think Jesus didn't stop them from killing them. Because um, he left them. He left them because to turn all of our hearts to him. Yes. And why would he do that for us? Because he loves us. That's right. And we don't understand. We cannot comprehend that. But that's the right answer. Th that is true. Mm -hmm. Whether we can understand it or not, I don't know. I don't think we can. I don't think we'll ever understand it. But he let himself be killed on the cross. Even though he didn't deserve to die, he had never done any, not even, he never even, 
disobeyed his, he never even forgot to clean the bathroom <laughs> when he was supposed to remember. I mean, it, he never did the littlest, he never did any of the littlest, 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 smallest little sin. He never sinned, but they killed him. But he let himself be killed so that his perfect sacrifice, his death, could cover the sins of everybody who lived before, everybody who was alive then, and all of us, and everybody between then and now that lived. All we, he died so that our sins could be covered. And everybody that turns from themselves and believes on him, he will forgive their sins. And he showed... He sh and they buried him in the grave. And then he rose from the dead. It wasn't a magic trip. It was for real. He was dead. And he rose from the dead. He showed there that he was the master. He was the Lord over death. Now when death comes to everybody here on the earth, everybody obeys death. It's kind of weird because death is not a person. But you get hopefully you get the idea. When death comes, it's our time. We go. When death came to Jesus, three days later, he rose from the dead and says, I am the Lord over death. I am the master of death. Death doesn't have any control over me. He is Lord of all. And that's why he humbled himself. He humbled himself. He was obedient he, he let himself be died, even the death of the cross, which is the worst, most gross, most gruesome, most horrible kind of death. And because he did that, the Bible says, the Lord has highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name, that, class, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Lord. Now, He is Lord of everything, whether we obey Him or not. So if we don't obey Him, if you disobey, you're in trouble, right? No. Yes. yes. When you disobey, you're in trouble. Now sometimes human beings... Uh, both ways, but sometimes human beings, if you disobey them, they don't they don't judge you like you should be judged. They don't punish you like you should be judged. But God is not, He is always just. He always gives the perfect punishment for the sin. And so everyone will stand before God and be judged by Jesus because He's the Lord. He's the Master. Now, we, if we believed on him, we said, you're the boss. But sometimes, even though we've turned to him and believed on him and he's forgiven our sins, sometimes we don't do what he says. And we're like, I'm sorry. That was wrong. I should have been obeying you and I didn't. Please forgive me. But whether we say that or not, he's still the boss, isn't he? And we should want to obey him, right? Right? I mean, in the beginning, that slave, remember? That slave, he said, my master is so good to me. He takes care of me. I will let him be my master for the rest of my life. And so he put a hole in his ear. But Jesus is more than good for us, good to us. He died. He died on the cross for every single person. And so every single person could have their sins forgiven. If they will turn to him and believe on him, they believe he's, he's the Lord. They believe he's the creator. He's the Savior. If they believe on him, believe that his death paid for their sins, and believe on him, they have their sins forgiven, and they should love him for all the rest of their life. Love him so much that it's not that, that whatever he says to do, they will do. You should love Jesus so much that whatever he says to do, you will do. You know, and we know what he says to do. I'm not saying that he says, hey, I want you to know. He doesn't do that. We know what he says, right? He says, children, obey your parents, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. 
So if Jesus is Lord, we should be obeying our parents, shouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. And when we disobey our parents, if he's our Savior and our Lord, we dis we're, we're disobeying him. And, we, and that's why we don't like, we don't feel good when we disobey. Because we're not making Jesus happy. We're disobeying him. It is bad. That's right. But we can say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I disobeyed my parents. And I know you wanted me to, dis to obey them. But I did what I wanted instead of what you wanted. Please forgive me. I want to obey you. And we can do that with everything that, that the Bible tells us. Because the Bible is God's word. It's what Jesus wants us to do. And we should be obeying him. He is the Lord. He's the, but he's not just the Lord of those who have turned and believed on him. The ones who have turned to him and believed on him, we should obey him because we love him. Because we know what he did for us. And we know a little bit of what he did for us. He forgave our sins. But everybody in the world, everybody, right? Yeah. Everybody. Every knee. Not just those that have believed on him. Someday, every knee will bow. Everybody who's died will be raised from the dead. They will be standing before... God and Jesus will be there and every knee, every knee of every person who's ever lived will be there and we will all at that point bow our knees and confess that Jesus is Lord. But only those who believe on Jesus while they're here on the earth before they die will be able to stay in heaven. At that point when everybody does, those who didn't believe on him, they'll be forced, oh yeah, he is Lord. And he's the judge, and they will not stay in heaven. But those who have recognized that he's the Lord, and that he died for them, and they turned from their sins and believed on him, and had their sins forgiven, they will stay in heaven and serve God with and Jesus for the rest of their lives. All right. So that's something to think about. Is Jesus your Lord? Yes. He's everybody's Lord. Are you obeying him like he's the master? That's what we need to be thinking about. And then we also need to think, he died on the cross. Have I asked him to forgive my sins? Have I asked him to save me? Even though he, he died so everybody could be saved, but have I turned from my sin and said, God, I don't want to sin. I want, I, I want you to save me, and I'm going to live for you for the rest of my life. That's what we should be doing. That's what God wants us to do. That's why Jesus came and died.